How are you all doing folks and uh, welcome back to Alcomoto's Garage Series and a while ago we did mention that we were due for doing the 10k service on the Sportster so here we are in the garage and that's exactly what we're going to do but for this one we're going to go a little bit more in depth of what we've previously done because if you look back in the back catalogue we've actually done the 5k service on the bike so with this one we will be doing the engine oil and primary and uh, checking the clutch adjustments and then we will remove the rear wheel to check the real bear wheel bearings and uh, we will be replacing the rear brake pads and so forth. So it just gives us a little bit more in depth uh, maintenance on the bike and show you guys a few of the tips and tricks uh, along the way. So let's get cracking after the intro. Okay, so once you've warmed the bike up, very, very simple for the oil change. If you remove this clip, pop that down there safe, and you've just got this tube here. So we pull that tube down under there, take the bolt and basically just undo this clip, and then pull out the bung. Now you'll notice it's draining out quite slow. We've warmed the bike up until we release the oil cap. Now on the other side of the bike, now the good thing is, with that not draining out like water, we know I even after 5,000 miles, the viscosity of that oil is still quite good. It doesn't feel like it's broken down too much and you can see even though it's turned and discoloured it's still got a good stickiness to it so i'm quite happy with that so i'll just leave that draining and then move on to the next step okay for the second part of the service brings us to the oil filter now i use a, a, a filter strap it's what i use at work and i've just got enough room to get that on there and turn it enough to do it by hand. You can use the collar filter or you can use the strap filter that uses an extension for a uh, half inch ratchet and so forth. Uh, but that always works for me. There you go, and it's easy done by hand now. Now to catch all the residue that falls from the back of the filter, just cut an old milk carton. Some people use foil and the like, but you can just push that under there head that down, take off the top, take out the rest of the oil you've drained in the tub, onto there like so, and then remove the oil filter. And then you can see how that works, beautiful. Yeah, closer look. So it's a perfect way of just catching all the residual oil out from underneath the filter and you don't lose any down the frame. As I said, a lot of people do use the silver foil trick, uh, but this works absolutely perfect and it's not going anywhere. Top tip of the day. So we can go ahead now and remove the filter. Okay, and we'll just give you a closer look now and you can see how that little trick works. It's, it's right just beneath and it goes towards the oil sender unit and it's just enough to catch everything. So not one bit of oil has dripped down beneath into the frame there whatsoever. Okay, just remember when you put your new oil filter back on,
with a little bit of oil on your finger and just smear it around on the gasket. And what this will do is, one, it helps to seal it, and two, the next time you take it off, you won't be struggling. If you don't do that and you put that on dry, then you'll probably end up putting a screwdriver through the filter next time you come to take it off. It'll be that tight. And there's no need to go stupid when you're putting these back on. Okay, we can take that off now. Okay, so with your oil filter, it's just basically tighten it until you feel it tighten, and it's just another quarter of a turn, just by hand. Okay, so around about there, and then with a firm grip, just a quarter of a turn, until you can't feel it anymore. And that's good enough for me. Okay, now I've changed about probably 10,000 filters in my lifetime as a service engineer, so I guarantee that's all you need to do. No need to put the strap on or anything, just tighten it by hand. And what we'll do now, we'll come back to the main drain. What I always like to do, you come back to your filler, you can take that out for now, we don't need that. And just put a drop of fresh oil in, that's all you need. In a minute, you'll see that start to drip out. And all we're doing, there we go. We're just flushing through the system with the clean oil. Now there's nothing wrong with not doing that, but it's just part of the procedure I like to do. And with it being on a 10K, at least I know that it's just flushing through any old oil left in that pipe. Okay, so we've more or less stopped dripping now. So what we're going to do is take the bung, pop that back in the tube. But we're gonna leave that loose. Before we tighten this up, we're gonna fill the oil up and then we need to purge the system through, okay? So I'll go back around the other side. Okay, so remember folks, we need three quarts of oil now in the tank. So here goes the fresh fluid. And you can see when I use a nice, clean, fresh funnel. Okay, so we've put just under three quarts in now, and we're about halfway on the dipstick. What we need to do now is just burp out the air out of the system. So that just brings us back to the bung again. Okay, as easy as that. Pop that back in. And we can tighten that clip up now. Finish with that. And that just sits up there like so. And then you can put the clip back over, back onto your frame. As easy as that. Okay folks, so that's the majority of it done now. But what we're gonna do is just run the bike and warm it up and then check the oil when it's hot and then that'll give us a true reading on the dipstick. And if it's a little bit under the mark, then we can just top it up from there. Okay, it's as simple as that. So. Okay, 
That is absolutely perfect. Okay folks, so now I've done the engine service, uh, we're gonna take off the Derby cover and drain out the primary. So you're gonna use a T27, just make sure you use the right one and get a decent fit. What you don't want to do is round off one of these babies. Or you will be cursing. And the amount of people I've heard of are snapping these in. They're only like a little quarter bolt. And when you put these back as well, don't go too heavy with the Loctite. And you don't want the serious strength Loctite either, just use a medium at max. And all they want to drop on each one. You're probably noticing now that they came out quite easy and I did crack them off just before we started recording again, so that's the reason why. So we've got a storm blowing outside today. Absolutely been raining the last two days. Two storm systems coming over the UK, so uh, I'm quite happy I'm in the garage, so no riding whatsoever at all. Today, we just need a little screwdriver. Hence the reason why we're now doing the servicing. Okay, so when you take this off, you'll always have a little bit of residue oil just on the inside. Again, pop that safe. And if you notice, I keep a block of wood just underneath the kickstand to keep the bike upright. If you don't, you'll end up with oil just dripping out from the bottom of the primary here. You'll also note that there's an O-ring here. Just be careful not to damage that. And then pop that safe again. There's no need to take that off. It, it normally stays inside this groove. And then if we can get some light on there, and bring you guys a little bit closer. And you can just see the oil level just on the bottom of the casing. There's not much in there, there's only a quart of oil. And it's just at the bottom of where your clutch pack is. And that's exactly how you want it to be when you refill it. Okay, so just beware of the spring as well. Your clutch adjusting knot there will only go on one way, so no need to worry about that. But don't lose that piece, that's important. We've already cracked that off loose. Feel that bung with your fingers. So once you crack that off, just undo that and let the oil out. But on the bottom of here, you'll see a magnet, okay? And that will pick up any bits of swarf and things that's in the system. You can just see, it's like a gray metallic color. That's nothing to be concerned about. It's just filings you'll find over time and that's what the magnet's there for, just to take those wear parts off. So make sure you give that a good clean. The only time you want to be concerned is if you find bits of clutch, bits of gears and everything inside there. But of course you'd have no drive anyway. And looking at that, we're ready for a new O-ring. Okay, if I can show you guys that one, you can see that O-ring's a little bit perished now. So. We need to replace that seal. Okay, so it's always handy to have a box of O-rings in your shop. It makes things a lot easier in the future. Pop that new one on there like so. Right then folks, we're back and you'll probably notice now there's a little change. I think I've had a bit of a shave and I'm wearing something different, okay? So I had to stop the service on the uh, recording the other day. I had something on and I was waiting for some uh, parts to turn up. Um, so we're back in the workshop and we're gonna carry on, I think, from where we left off, if I can remember. Uh, and then we're gonna backtrack a little bit because I've looked back on the footage. There's a couple of things that I just wanna go over before we move forward on the service. Okay, so if I remember last time, 
Let's just zip back. Okay. We had drained the primary. Uh, so we drained the drain plug, which is a 5 8 plug. And one thing I forgot to mention is underneath the plug, you will have, I think it's different on uh, other models. Uh, it'll either be a 19 mil uh, or a 5 8 which is 15 mil or just, or, or just a touch over. Underneath that, you should have a quarter inch uh, hex as well. Underneath the plug. So, never undo it by the quarter inch hex key. Always undo it by the ring spanner. That way you're not gonna strip it. And then to, uh, I did, I think I mentioned when I tightened it. Yep, going back in the foot, yeah, definitely did. Don't go too tight because you're tightening it into a, an aluminium or aluminium housing. So you don't wanna tighten it too much because you might break the casing. So ideally, always tighten it up by this. Now, you know, if you're a mechanic, you get a feel of the spanners. You, you sort of know how much to do it with. But I'm telling you guys, if you wanna do this at home, do it by this method and use that. And that way you're not gonna over tighten or stress the nut and then break your casing. Not to frighten you. So while we're there now, we've got the fluid drained out of the primary and we're just gonna show you how you do adjust the clutch. So the reasons you'll do this is sometimes uh, as a clutch wears, and we'll go over this uh, on the chalkboard in a bit, uh, you might find the bike starting to drag when you've got the clutch pulled in and the bike still feels like it's got a biting point on it. And that could be an indication of your clutch plates wearing and so forth. Uh, there's two or three things that can cause that. Uh, but luckily, with it being a cable clutch like this on, on wet discs, and again, we'll go into that in further detail, there is a way you can adjust that and get some more life out of those clutch plates before you have to replace them. And then basically, if we go back again, we've got the nut on here with the spring, which is underneath the derby cover, or the derby cover, and it only goes on in one way, like so. Then what you'd do, we'll bring this closer. Okay, so we'll just go over that again. If you've never had this off, that only goes on one way, like so. So take that off, and then normally you would find your clutch cable and then release down at the nut there and give yourself some slack on the adjuster here. Okay, so you'd wind that off. Uh, in this case, we're not gonna do that. Just shows how dirty my bike is. Now the slack in your clutch lever. Okay. That's about all you want. If you've got that lever rattling around, you've too much slack in your cable and that's where you can take that out. But by undoing that, what you're doing is you're taking all the tension off the clutch plates, the friction plates, and adjusting back to the bare minimum and then tightening back on here, you can adjust that so you know you've got the correct amount of slack on the cable. If you can see now I'm pulling the clutch lever in, it's pulling the cable. So what that is doing is releasing the clutch plates, the friction plates, and then when you let go, you can just see, I'm just touching the lever now, and you can just see that little bit of slack. Okay? So you can see the end of the cable, and you've got this collar on here, which sits in this groove. What you don't want is that to be pulling here. It's pulling on your clutch all the time. You want that to be off there, and just see that little bit of slack. It's not a lot, but I know that is completely released. So when you're letting go of your clutch, you know those plates are giving you friction. Okay, so take the flat blade screwdriver, turn that nut a couple of turns. Okay, so that's a free plate. You can see the slack in there now. And then just slowly turn that out anti-clockwise. So you just start to feel the friction there. Okay, you see how it's got a grip of that now. And then just quarter turn back. And that is all you need to adjust your clutch. You can see if that was adjusted out of sync too much, you've got all this slop and play. 
So just turn it out there until you start to feel the friction. Here we go. And then quarter to half turn back. And that's absolutely perfect. And then you're ready then. Just pop that back on there and then ready for the Derby cover or the Derby cover to go back on there. Okay, so now we're gonna put the oil in. Okay, so oils. Now, obviously I'm using mineral oil, and it's a genuine Harley Davidson min mineral oil, 2050, uh, because it's what I've always used in the bike. Um, and the color of that when it came out after 5,000 miles was still a good color, so I know my engine is in a healthy condition. Okay, so, brings us back to the primary oil. The primary oil, which is the Screaming Eagle Sin 3 2050. This oil is designed to be used in all three holes. <laughs> Try and say that without smiling. Engine, crankcase and transmission. Okay. Now, in the big twins, obviously you've got the three holes in a sports so it's only the two holes that we, uh, we have to worry about. Okay, which is uh, the primary in the engine. Okay, we don't, that's a chain case, so we don't have to worry over the transmission, only have to worry about that in the big twin bikes. Okay, so there's two methods of filling up from here. Usually you wouldn't take the derby cover off if you were draining the oil and not doing anything with the clutch. Um, you would be doing it from the chain inspection cover. Okay, so to remove the inspection cover, it's a 532 Allen key. Okay, get a grip, spin those off. Okay, so sometimes you just need a little bit of pressure to get the gasket off behind because it wants to spring back on. There we go. I'm just using a seal pick here just to get behind it. <clears throat> A habit of sticking. Okay, so when you have the inspection cover off and there's the chain, and just to check the wear on that, let's get on the floor. If you can just put a flat blade screwdriver under here and lift that, uh, that looks to be a little bit slack. say probably around three quarters of an inch there it's just up on the top of the cover and of course if these get too slack what you can have is you can actually hit the top of the casing so it's important as part of your 10,000 service at least to well do it every 5,000 but only 10,000 especially make sure you do inspect that okay so we need to adjust that brings us down to the adjuster nut which is just underneath so if we pop the camera down there there's our drain plug which is uh, we've explained that's a five eighths and a quarter tiny on this one it is a seven eighths or a metric 22 millimeter and these aren't overly tight what you need to do with this see that nice and easy Nothing in that at all. Okay, so slacken that off with your finger. Hold that. And then underneath there, you will be able to put and find my Allen keys. That's a quarter. You need a quarter key. And just turn that slightly. And then I don't know if you can see that now, but as I turn this, you can see it pushing up the chain. See that? So that was literally a quarter of a turn. So we need to go a bit more on that, still slack. Of course, as you're tightening that, what it wants to do is tighten that nut there so if you just back that off a couple of turns and then 
proceed to tighten that up. Okay, and you can see now that's taking the tension right out of the chain. Well within now probably half inch. We took a quarter of an inch of play out of that. And all we do is just lock that back up. Not too tight, of course, again, because you're going into aluminium casing. Just bring that a bit closer for you guys. And that's a hundred times better. Okay, so now we're ready for the SIN 3 primary oil. Now remember, we should be using the majority of this. Now, as I said, you can buy a tool that goes in here and you can fill it from here. Or you can use a HD funnel. can't be clean fresh oil. If you think about it, this thing's been all over the country over the last year, so it's uh, well deserved getting its birthday treat. Okay, so pop the gasket back in there, just make sure it's nice and even. There is some little notches where it will grip the seal. You just gotta be careful when you put it back that it doesn't pull that off because you won't see it when you're tightening that up. If it helps you can always put a ring of grease around it as well. And that folks is that. Okay folks so thanks for watching this service interval and the 10k service on my 48. So, so far we've done the engine oil uh, and filter, uh, we've done the primary and we've adjusted the chain. So, three simple things. And I know we've covered them once before, we did the 5k service, but that was outside and that was over a year or two ago, it was two years ago I think. Uh, so, of course now we've done it in the uh, Alcomoto workshop, so that's one out of the way and one tick the box. So we're going to go further with this, we've still got the back wheel to take off, we've still got the wheel bearings to check, we've still got the spark plugs to do. Uh, so there's still some in-depth and also the air filter that's not been off now for over a year and it's been through some rain and what have you so we're going to take the air filter off clean the air filter out which is the Arlen Ness air filter on this bike um, and then a few other things uh, that you would normally go through in a 10k service just as safety precautions uh, for the coming season ahead so uh, again thanks for watching Alcomoto hope you've learned something all you new subscribers thank you very much uh, well, just a quick little thing actually, because the UK at the moment, we're going into lockdown on Thursday again for another month, which means uh, it's unlikely that we'll be going for any rides out with groups or anything like that. And of course the winter's drawing in as well. Uh, look out for the uh, giveaway tank winner, which will be happening this weekend. There's more to come from that, I think on Friday night, Saturday morning, which is the day before the draw. So uh, again, we'll see you soon folks. Thanks for watching, Alcomoto, he's signing out.